Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be playing Summer at Marisol Bay. This is very late for me to, re to be recording this. Oh, I'm already failing to speak. Good start. <laughs> at 8pm. It's been very loud here today. Birds and washing machines and TVs and the neighbours are moving and it's been rough. I've been trying to record all day and it just hasn't happened. <laughs> so, this is, I think, our last game for Yaoi Jam 2020. Um, summer at Marisol Bay. A little bit about the game. Welcome to Marisol Bay Resort, the premier summer de destination for families, couples, and singles alike. We are now hiring seasonal summer staff to create memorable experiences for our guests. Are you a creative and hardworking individual? Do you like to meet new people? Are you looking for a rewarding hands-on job opportunity? If you answered yes to these three questions, Marisol Bay is the right place for you. If hired as an entertainer, you'll be tasked with interacting with guests and making them feel like they're one in a million. Entertainers will lose themselves in their characters and draw people into their attraction. Guests will leave Marisol Bay wanting to come back again and again. Send all inquiries and resumes to Miss Amelia. Take control of Kiro Avansky. The new hire at Marisol Bay Resort. Help him navigate his summer working as the resident entertaining. Can Kiro create lasting memories or will he just be another seasonal worker? Will he make new friends, enemies, possibly fall in love? Summer Bay at... Uh, summer at Marisol Bay. Mr. <laughs> summer Bay at... <laughs> God, time it away. No, thank you. Um, Summer at Marisol Bay features around 45,000 words of content, two routes, three ending, partial voice acting, uh, original sprites that blink, so got some sprite admiration, wow, animation. <laughs> and it is completely safe for work. Now this this game is released by Legend X Games. And has some very talented people in it. Namely Ali Kiro is voiced by Edward and you can hear him as sign in the divine speaker he will also be the lead in the ocean at night when we release the voice acting for that hopefully soon <laughs> so let's get into it i watch as a couple in their 20s get in line at the concierge desk they're sharing a massive blue and green suitcase the man struggling to keep it upright as the woman slides her printed receipt towards one of the small, the small, the smiling receptionists. I'm sorry to every dev whose script I ruin with my babbling. <laughs> I swear I could read. <laughs> this is the Marisol Bay Resort, where I'll be working for the next two months. I take a step forward to get in line when I'm cut off by a giggling small child who runs under the red dividers. Welcome to the cocktail ocean. Wow, sounds fancy. Slightly lewd. Is <laughs> the alcoholic I am. His mother gives me an apologetic smile and rushes after him. I move out of her path as the knot in my stomach grows. Though not my first choice in summer work, the resort is honestly beautiful. The two people standing behind the concierge desk taking reservations are poised and 
typing away furiously on their computers. There's not a single grouchy patron either. They're all chatting to themselves or is as if they're at a party. All signs point to this being a great job. But I still can't help but feel nervous. It's a whole new adventure for me. Excuse me, are you look a little lost? How can I help you with something? The soft and gentle voice belongs to an older woman. Her eyes are warm as she smiles beckoning me forward. Glancing to my right, I see the mid-twenties couple checking in as the mother and son waltz off down the corridor. I swallow hard and step forward. Hi. Uh, my name is Kiriavansky and I work here. It's my first day. Do you know where I'm supposed to go? The woman's smile doesn't falter. In fact, it seems to grow wider as I speak. Did you hear that, Liam? We have a new member of the Marisol Bay family. Welcome. Oh, oh, he looks like he's got an attitude. <laughs> he's here of interest, I hope so. The man, Liam, hits the anarchy rather loudly on his keyboard and slides a piece of paper as well as two keys towards the woman and her partner. There you are. You will be staying in room 243 on the second floor. In your room, you'll find a list of the resort's amenities and available phone numbers should you need some assistance. Please enjoy your stay and do not hesitate to ring the front desk if you encounter any problems. He bows his head to them as they thank him, and I'm so then I'm so clicking to oh, no, go back. <laughs> Trigger happy mouse finger, and then he looks towards me and his coworker. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was? Uh, Kira Ovansky, the new entertainer at the water. Is this the old lady? I'm sorry. Kira Ovansky, the new entertainer at the water park, correct? The woman slides. Yeah, it must be the old lady. <laughs> the woman slides a piece of printed computer paper towards me and points to my name on the list titled New Hires. Next to my name are indeed the words Water Park Entertainer. Followed by a, a capital letter, R. What does the R mean? You'll be working in the recreational area of the resort. Liam looks to the side and the smile he was using before while checking in. The guest is gone. <laughs> What's wrong with the recreational part of the resort? That is like retail in a nutshell. When the customers can see you, you're bright and smiling. I still smile when I speak. Just as a habit from working in retail for so long. Because they can tell if you're not smiling at them, even through a phone. The moment a customer leaves, your face just drops. <laughs> it's exhausting smiling all the time. What's the other section of the resort? That's the luxury section, for our guests' more finer tastes. Ah, now it makes some sense. Liam cares for more upscale experience for his guests. What would you consider recreational? That includes amenities like Pirate Cove, our water park, the lookout, our casual dining experience, and of course, the gift shop. No experience is complete without a gift shop. Speaking of, I do believe our manager mentioned hiring a new pirate mascot. What was that? I have been begging the owner for years to change the names of some of the things, but alas. The old woman offers me a pitiful smile as a stone settles in my stomach. Well... That explains why the job description was so... vague. 
I knew this whole thing sounded too good to be true. I'm a mascot? I didn't go into six years of student debt to play the novelty pirate mascot at a summer resort. Let me ring in Amelia. She's a site manager and will be able to answer all your questions. She'll show you around as well. Amelia, is it true, dear? As Liam heads into the back room, the woman leans forward to me. Oh, dear. I forgot to introduce myself, haven't I? Everyone here calls me Mrs. V. I've been working at this resort since I was a teenager. So please consider me your lifeline if you never need one. Her sunny demeanor seems like the opposite of Liam's cold professionalism. It's quite nice to see. After a moment, Liam returns with a curt nod. Amelia will be here shortly. Feel free to wait in the lobby. Not by himself, of course. Kiro, would you do me the honor of telling me a bit about yourself? This old lady loves a good story. Liam cracks a small smile and shakes his head as he turns his attention to sorting paperwork behind the desk. Uh. Oh, uh, well, I graduated from Ocean View School of Performing Arts two years ago with a degree in theater. Liam looks up from his work suddenly, as if what I'm saying has caught his attention. No kidding. It's really tough to get into that school. Are you from Ocean View? My mother grew up in Ocean View. She always told me stories about it, so I decided to apply for school there. Now I'm back in York Heights with my parents and little sister. If you've really graduated from OSPA, you shouldn't be here. You should be on Broadway or something. Cool it. Ooh, that was stern. Cool it, Liam. You're manning the concierge desk despite graduating from the country's top law school, aren't you? <laughs> Smackdown. Take that. Liam scoffs and turns to file some paperwork. I look towards the voice and see a woman wearing a blue and white pinstripe suit. Kiro, right? My name is Amelia and I'll be your manager. I'm the one who I'm the one designating your duties, as well as handling your payroll and any customers you're having trouble with. Sound good? Yeah, sounds great. I look forward to working with you. Oh, you have no idea how excited we are to be switching to in-house talent to entertain our guests at Pirate Cove. This is the first year we're having an actor out on the beach and guests have been expressing genuine interest in it. Well, when she puts it like that, the job doesn't sound like being a mere mascot. If people really want to pirate at Pirate's Cove, I'll be the best damn Captain Bailey ever. Amelia begins walking towards the resort's entrance and motions for me to follow her. I'll give you a quick tour. You can meet some of your new co-workers and we can get your measurements for the costume. Amelia leads me out of the building and takes me through a path that spirals off to the right. My jaw drops. The lush greenery, the slick architecture, the giant gently rotating globe that hangs atop a massive water fountain. It feels unreal, but strangely soothing. This is a very kind of futuristic place. It's pretty. Oh, it, ooh, it's natural. It is natural globe. That's cool. Water fountain kind of reminds me of the Singapore airport, which is very, very extra. Why do you need a, a, a it's just, it's really pretty, but I don't understand it. Why? It's so extra. Meanwhile, you've got Sydney Airport. It's just like 
Get your shit. Get out. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Get sniffed by the dogs. I get bomb tested every time I go to the airport. Why? What about what about me? Says <laughs> says bomb test. I don't know. Every single time I've been to an airport. Uh. This is what the employees like to call the hub because it connects both the luxury amenities, she points to the right with a clipboard, and the recreational facilities. She motions left. The owner was torn between making Marisol Bay a sophisticated upscale getaway or turning it into a fun family vacation spot. In the end, he chose both. Typically, the adults unwind with a cocktail and massage while their kids roam the recreation half. So I'm basically babysitting a herd of unsupervised kids. This is exactly what I went into massive student debt for. I try not to let my frustration shows. Maybe it won't be so bad. For the most part, the two sides don't interact. When they do, this is the crossover point. It's a good place to spend your lunch break if you want. How long are the breaks? An hour long lunch with two 15 minute breaks as well. Once we get to your post, I'll give you your tentative schedule. Amanda keeps on moving. Amanda, where did I get Amanda from? Amelia. It's not even close. You'll be working with Brooke, our party planner slash barmaid. She runs the lookout where all our hungry little land lovers go once they've worked up an appetite. As Amelia trails off, I take one last look at the hub. Even if I won't have to visit the luxury side, I'd still like to check it out eventually. For now though, I need to keep up with my boss. Backgrounds are really nice in this. A few flights of stairs later, ooh, I'm out. <laughs> we emerge through a stone archway onto a huge wooden deck, packed with countless tables, chairs, and mint green umbrellas. A small chalkboard sign catches my eye, the lookout. So this is the restaurant everyone has been talking about. Amelia smiles warmly at me and extends her arm out. Welcome to the lookout. Our casual dining destination. Today's menu includes Captain Bailey's fish burger and swashbuckling seasoned fries. She puts her hand on her lips and sends kisses into the air. Absolutely delish, I promise. Just sit tight for a moment while I go get Brooke. She'll show you the ropes. As Amelia saunders off, I look over towards the balcony. There aren't too many people here, but it's still early. I wonder how packed it'll be during the summer rush. God, I hope it won't be too bad. Peering over the railing, I see a massive pirate ship docked below. The large sails dance in the wind as water spouts through the top of an enormous boulder. That is pretty cool. I want to go on that ship. I don't, I hate boats, but that looks cool. I'm gonna go on like a proper like pirate ship. Like that, like if that looks cool. I would probably die, but like that looks cool. I wanna go on one. <laughs> so bad on boats. A twisting word of web, a twisting web of water slides. That was more difficult to say than it should have been. Curl into the sparkling blue waters and the nearby sand almost shimmers. It's breathtaking. If that's where I'll be working, well, the pirate life might be for me. I'd almost thought that by now I'd be part of some famous acting troupe, or at least acting regularly. Marisol Bay is just a stepping stone. I have to remember that. Once the summer's over and I've saved up, saved up enough money, I'll ask Amelia for a recommendation letter. My thoughts trail off as I stare at the sea, warm summer sun beating down on my skin. One day I'll come back here. 
not for work, but as a rich actor needing to relax. Hey there. A high, a high pitched voice cuts through the air. I whip around to see a girl. Her orange hair practically glowing. She smiles at me, teeth sparkling behind her warm red lips. My name is Brooke. She sounds exactly like I thought she would. <laughs> nice. It's nice to meet you. I return her smile as best as I can and offer a handshake. I'm Cairo. It's great to be here. The two of you will be working together. As I said before, the two of you be w will be working together quite closely. Most guests visit the lookout to refuel after the fun of Pirate Cove, or they run to the to the cove to burn off what they just ate. Oh. The two areas work as a single unit. If one fails, you both fail. Brown, brown, brown. Don't make it sound so scary. Listen up, Cairo. We're not going to fail. We just need to look out for each other. Speaking of which, Brooke gestures for us to wait before dashing over to a nearby table. She returns with a pair of walkie talkies. <laughs> she hands me. She hands one to me and I turn it over. The words Pirate Cove are scrolled across the side in a gold marker. Courtesy of the big boss man himself. I asked for them as soon as they got promoted. Can't exactly hear you too well if I'm up here and you're down there. Something about her straight, honest confidence makes me feel at ease. Very smart. But you'll still need to keep your work phones on you. Huh? <laughs> Wait. We get phones? Ah, oh, yes. They can't make any calls, but the resort's group messaging system lets us communicate without the guests overhearing our every word. Don't worry. We'll be extra careful with the walkie-talkies. I've even thought up some neat code words. Brooke claps her hands together and nods at, Ami at Amelia. <laughs> I'm failing so hard at her name and it's so easy. <laughs> He scribbles something down on her clipboard. I'll go check if the pirate costume is ready. You two start planning how you want to run things. This is a job, not a summer camp. Keep in mind, this is a job, not a summer camp. As Amelia walks off, Brooke motions towards a nearby table. I take a seat across from her, watching her bounce in her seat. She's excited. Amelia's practically giving us all, giving us full creative freedom here. The recreational side is so going to win. Win what exactly? I thought I was just tired to be an entertainer. Though the more time I spend here, the less normal any of this seems. I need to ask Amelia exactly what my duties are. Well, things are kind of experimental right now. The big old pirate ship's been here for years, but nothing's ever been done with it. Everyone was shocked when the boss said we'd be opening the beach finally. The timing is interesting though. A little birdie told me that the big boss man might be nixing the wreck side to make it more like the rest of the resort. Upscale. I actually haven't, oh, I actually haven't seen the luxury side yet. Ugh. Count your blessings, Cairo. The manager, Carmela, is a real snob. She said the same she's paid the same rate as all of us, but since her clientele are fancy, she thinks she's all that. With caviar on the side. She's been here longer than anyone though. Ever since the oh longer than anyone, so even longer than the other old lady, so she's an old lady. Ever since the boss man bought the place. I can't even remember a time where she wasn't trying to get the wreck side revamped into something more profitable. Camilla sounds like a real character. Got that right. Well, I can't deny that I'd prefer an upscale location. I'm sure the recreational side has its fans. If I'd come here as a kid, I would have loved to run around and play on a giant pirate ship. 
So, what does all this have to do with me? I've been here less than an hour. I'm not trying to bombard you, I just don't want Camilla to sink her teeth into our little slice of Marisol Bay. I've been at the lookout for three years. This place means something to people. So many kids come back year after year, skidding down the same old water slides, slurping the same bl bright blue... S oh no, don't give kids blue. Okay. When I was young, the only colour I was not allowed to consume was blue. Because it would send me absolutely feral. <laughs> don't give kids blue. I'm not asking you to save the resort or anything, but personally, I'm already pretty invested. Okay. <laughs> I'll show Camilla and the big boss man just what the recreational side's made of. Brooks seems all fired up. I wish I could be as passionate as she is, but I need to be honest with her. Look, Brooke, I just want to do my best and get some good references for, for my resume. I'll follow your lead, but I don't think I can save the resort, no matter how good my acting is. Brooke pushes a stray heart. <laughs> Brooke pushes a, a stray hair behind her ear and sighs. Yeah, sorry to unload on you. I want this summer to be the best it can be. You do what you gotta do. I'll handle log the, log the logistics. Oh gosh. Words! They're not working. She waves her hand dismissively. Despite her warm smile, I'm not quite sure what she's thinking, but thankfully, Amelia soon returns. Apparently, the costumes are one size fits most, but if you need it adjusted, we'll work on that later. She hands me a brown paper bag and turns on her heels. Alright Brooke, you can return to your prep work. Let me know if anything comes up in the group chat. Cairo. As for you, Cairo, let's head over to the locker rooms. Lovely meeting you, by the way. I'm sure we'll work great together. Brooke gives me a small wave, which I return with a smile and nod. I don't know about the whole backstage feud happening, but working with Brooke will at least be interesting. I follow Amelia down the stairs to Pirate Cove below. As we head towards the giant pirate ship, it's obvious that this area isn't operating yet. There's no one around but us. Here's your vessel. While you'll spend most of your most of the day on the beach with the lifeguards and slide attendants, the locker room, bathrooms, and your break room are all on board. Oh cool, their staff area is the act is actually the ship. We'll also we're also opening reservation for pirate themed parties which you will, of course, be hosting. Kids' parties too? What do they ever do to deserve this? Still, I need to stay calm. Don't let us see how scared you are, Cairo. Amelia's pace doesn't slow as we move towards the massive ship. It really is a marvel. I can't imagine how much money Marisol Bay must be making to afford this thing. Is this a real pirate ship? The outside of the ship is true to what one would expect of a historically accurate pirate ship. There are several huge white canvas sails, a large wooden steering wheel on the top deck of the boat, and cannons sitting over the edges of the slides. The sides. The Riptide was originally built to promote Walk the Plank. It's a, rec it's a recreation of the Queen Sylvia. You're talking about the old comics, right? Didn't they turn them into a really bad movie? I don't know how else to phrase it. The acting was terrible, the costumes looked like they'd been dragged from a costume shop clearance rack, the props looked like plastic children's toys. Did they spend all their money on a big ship? So I've heard. Which is probably why our owner, Ken, was able to acquire it for a shockingly low price. Now it's the rip the Riptide, Captain Bailey's pride and joy. Speaking of Bailey's pride and joy, 
if I'm going to be doing this character justice, I need to know a bit more about him. What his motives as a character, why is he a pirate, and what does this shit mean to him? What's the law for this Captain Bailey guy? How do you get the Riptide? Amelia stops mid-step, tilting her head and frowning. I guess it's a strange question, but I'm an actor. I can't play some solar stereotype. Well... Seeing as how we've never had Bailey here in the flesh, why don't you try coming up with your own law? <laughs> I don't actually have any. <sighs> Just the character name. Make the role uniquely yours. I heard Liam say that your degree leaves you overqualified for this, but there's a reason I chose you personally. She flips a page on her clipboard, then pulls out a pen and circles something before showing it to me. It's my resume. The part she's circled is a URL link to one of my senior thesis projects. A monologue filmed in my dorm room with me as a modern day Captain Hook. I'd been debating even including it in my resume. For a job like this, it might be seen as pretentious or over the top. Swashbuckling aside, it's clear to me that you're passionate about your craft. Marisol Bay needs that kind of energy, someone that completely disappear into their character. Captain Bailey is whoever you want him to be, as long as you can put in that same passion. He want, we want guests to feel like they're on a real pirate ship. So, I'm not a mascot? Of course not. Liam has only ever worked reception. He doesn't see the excitement of the kids or the smile of the parents. This may seem like a menial job at first, but you'll be making memories for these families. We're going to make their summers unforgettable. It's a big responsibility. When she lays it out like that, it's clear I have to give this job my all. Even if my audience is about a bunch of snotty preschoolers, I'll be brightening their day. If you think the outside is impressive, wait until you see the inside. She motions for me to follow her. Amelia isn't kidding when she says the Riptide has been fully renovated. The inside of the pirate ship looks nothing like I expected. There seems to be absolutely no wooden planks. No barrels lying around, no skulls and crossbone flags. It's almost entirely different from the outside, barely sticking to the pirate theme at all. The locker room is littered with large potted plants framed by ivory walls and a floor that shines just like it's been waxed. The owner wants to experiment with combining the bay's two styles. Yeah. Over there is the entrance to the Pirate Cove's water slides and just that way is the Riptide Lounge for our older, more esteemed guests. Kids would be thrilled to run through here singing sea shanties to an animatronic parrot in between bites of a baked turkey legs. Why is everything at this resort about splitting guests into groups? What about things that people can do together? I don't say it out loud, of course. It's not like I know the whole situation, and even if I did, I'm just the jolly pirate captain, right? Yeah, why Why would you have a pirate ship and, like, modernize the inside of it? Give me that pirate ship! I'm going to a pirate ship to see a pirate ship! That would be so fucking cool! Except I hate boats. <laughs> the restrooms are over here. If you could try your costume on and see if it fits, well, I can go and make sure your locker has been prepared. As Amelia walks off, I head to the bathroom to change. I'm by no means impressed when I pull Captain Bailey's long overcoat out of the brown paper bag. It feels like cotton, yet it's stiff and heavy. There's no way I can wear this in the blazing summer sun and not get heat stroke. Not to mention the comically oversized pirate hat. The thick, bulky costume feels like it's slowly suffocating me even though it's several sizes too large. 
The costume is so bulky that it fits right over the clothes that I'm wearing already. When I hold my arms out, there's a few inches of space between the fabric and my skin. The tattered pants hang off me. There are artificial holes and, patch and patches itching against my legs. The shoes are rubber boots, are rubber boot covers, and the whole outfit reeks of cheap plastic. God, no. I sift through the bag for the remaining pieces. The small felt eye patch and something else? I gasp when my fingers tighten around a curved chunk of rubber. No, no hook. Not for this, Captain. The costume might work for an air-conditioned community theatre, but a beach? No way. I don't even bother trying to look presentable before strolling out of the bathrooms. My new boss needs to see this monstrosity. So, what do you think? Lily's eyes widen as she sees me. She rushes over and grabs the end of my sleeve. <sighs> oh, who ordered this? You'll melt in that overcoat. She shakes her head. I'm relieved she's not trying to sell me on it. It's not as if I expected a movie level costume, but I at least need something that fits. We can't open Pirate's Cove without a proper pirate. But until we can order something else, we'll have to make do. Sorry. There's no way we can fall along the uh, below the opening. Cairo, I'm sorry. I get it. I actually wanted to ask if I could take this home and try to salvage it. Be my guest. Now that I think about it, Rook is going to school for fashion design. You could ask her for tips. Her lunch break is in an hour or so. In the meantime, we need to finalize some paperwork. Here's your locker assignment, your current schedule, a list of responsibilities, and a few safety agreements. Hey, safety agreements. That's a nice touch. WHS. Ugh. She hands me a dozen or so pages. I thumb through ab absentmindedly. We'll head to the cafeteria and go over the paperwork. We can discuss your role and you can ask any questions you may have. Sounds good. Fix the pirate ship. Restore it. I quickly get changed out of the costume. As Amelia leads me down a spacious, strangely clean hallway, I'm reminded that this part of the resort is still closed. Pirate Cove is waiting for its captain. The room Amelia takes me to resembles a school cafeteria mixed with a mall food court. There are countless tables that seat at least 10 people each. Imagining all the kids running, screaming, and tugging at my overcoat. I run a hand through my hair and take a seat across from Amelia at a table nearest to the door. This room was built in order to feed water park guests, but it was decided that the lookout would be more welcoming environment than an overcrowded food court. Let's quickly discuss your duties at Marisol Bay. You will be required to entertain the guests as Captain Bailey. In a way, you'll become him. What do you mean by that? You will be Captain Bailey the minute you put on that costume and you will not, and you will not stop until after the entirety of it has been removed and put back in your locker. Essentially, Essentially, I'm not breaking character, even when I'm on break or have to go pee. If you're in the eyesight of the guest, you have to be in character. We're selling an experience with Captain Bailey. Right, of course, I can do that. How long is my shift? Eight hours. But you'll have an hour break for lunch and two 15-minute breaks. Go to the employer locker, locker room or take off your costume if you'd like to drop the pirate act. You don't have to worry about watching the people who are on the water slides or swimming in the ocean. We have, we will have certified lifeguards and ride operators on duty at all time that Pirate's Cove is open. You will, however, be required to be vigilant. If you see something, you have to take action. You can't ignore someone who needs help because it's not your designated job. Yes, that much is obvious. I wouldn't just let someone drown if I can help it. But, 
WHS also states that you cannot put yourself in danger. You must assess the danger first. And if it's beyond your capability, it must, it must be warned of to someone who can help. Also that, also that stretches towards rule violations as well. Oh. If a guest is breaking a rule in front of you, kindly redirect them while staying in character. Remember, rules are there for safety. Most of all, make sure that everyone is having a good time. All it takes is one negative review on one of those travel sites and suddenly no one wants to visit Marisol Bay anymore. Mealy and I talk like this for a while. She lists us all my duties, what time I'll have to arrive at work, when I clock out, and everything in between. I fill out my paperwork and hand it back to her. All right. The paperwork seems like it's all in order. I've already taken the liberty to text Brooke about altering your costume, so she should be here any minute. I'm still so disappointed at the inside of this ship. Why did you do this? This could have been so cool. Amelia says her goodbyes and the two of us head back towards the locker room. I don't have to wait long for Brooke to, who makes her way to the locker room in just a few minutes. The girl bounces in happily, swinging her arms slightly. She stops when she sees me fumbling around with the ugly costume. She winks at me, pushing her bright orange hair over her shoulder. It's cute, but her charm isn't exactly working on me. I dismiss her words completely and present to her the issue at hand. See, I already run into a problem and could use some help. I hold up the brown paper bag towards the girl and who raises an eyebrow. Amelia told me you wanted to make the costume more your own. Is that what she said? The outfit is looking rather huge and unauthentic. I try to choose my words carefully for this situation, but Brooke doesn't really seem to care at all. Oh, so it's a hot mess, huh? Lucky for you, I know about all about altering clothes. Let me see. She reaches for the bag and practically takes it from my hands. She begins to take out the costume piece by piece and then cries out as if she's in pain. This is absolutely hideous. What kind of costume did Amelia give you? Honey, we need to throw this whole thing out. Burn it. I totally would, but we need a Captain Bailey tomorrow, so what can we do? We'll just cut these pants into shorts. As for the jacket, I can take it in so it'll fit better. I don't mind doing that for you. That's a lot of work. Please, don't worry. I can't be recommending my faithful patrons to go to Pirate's Cove with you wearing that monstrosity. Sorry, Kerry. I'm doing a service for all of us. She winks in my direction and continues to take out accessories from the bag. One by one, she scoffs at every single item, especially the hook. All garbage. Do you need an eye patch and a hook? I shake my head. I picture Captain Bailey as somewhat a classy guy. Riding the open ways for adventure, and you know, not losing any limbs. Perfect. I'll just need to do some measurements on you and that's it. Can I repay you somehow? I feel really bad that she's doing all this work for me after we only just met. She's a really nice person and I'd like to compensate Brooke in any way I can. I just, I'll, I just want our little neck of the woods to look and feel like a great time for guests. Do that for me and we're even. Uh -huh. It's all coming full circle. This has to has to do with that whole rivalry thing she's got going on with that Carmilla girl. Well, I'm not getting involved in that personally, but if all Brooke is asking me to do is the best is do the best is the best at my job, then that's okay with me. I plan to do that anyway. For that beautiful letter of recommendation at the end of the summer. Easy. We have a deal then. Now, just stand still while I get the measuring tape out of my locker. Brooke takes my measurements, all the while making awkward small talk. Time goes by rather quickly because Brooke needs to go back to work. I thank her and head out. 
As I'm leaving Pirate's Cove, it's easy to find the hub. I only need to follow the massive globe. It's quite beautiful up close, and I lament how often I'll be spending my lunch breaks here instead of in that... What? It's quite beautiful up close, and I, la I, I lament how often I'll be spending my lunch breaks here instead of in that giant cafeteria. Now if I recall, to the right of me... To the right will bring me to the luxury side of the resort. I look down and frown. Now, I'm not quite dressed for something like that. If I head straight forward, I'll pass through the lobby. But what's behind that big globe? I walk towards it and peer over the shrubs. Behind the globe... Behind the globe is a giant building with a sprawling path. Benches, potted plants, and people mulling about. I kind of want to check it out. I might as well see what's what there is around the resort, since I'll be here most of the summer. I begin walking towards the building when I notice the butterflies fluttering around in my stomach. I can't help but feel like I'll be swallowed up whole. I will... Will I be just another cog in this giant machine? Or will I really be able to make the difference that Brooke thinks I can? I don't know. Well, you've already got some ideas. You're already thinking about bringing the two areas together. I quickly shake the thought out of my head and take in the beautiful sights of the area around me. Seeing the signs on the light post as I step towards the massive building, I begin to get giddy. I haven't been to an aquarium since I was, like, 11. Cocktail Ocean. The premier dine-in and aquarium experience is only $29.95 a ticket for an aquarium tour and $50 per dinner. Ooh. Okay. Well, I see how Marisol Bay is able to operate with prices like that. Still, if I was a child, I'd beg my parents to take me to Cocktail Ocean. Heck, if I had the money right now, I'd go in and see it for myself. Now that I know what's in this area, I can go home feeling complete. Not as complete as if I'd gone inside and seen the stingrays, but maybe one day before the summer ends. I turn around to leave, but when I do, I bump shoulders with someone. I stumble backwards and reach out to steady myself before I fall over. My foot grazes the edge of one of the tiles in the beautifully paved stone path, but I quickly regain my balance. Though, not before waving my arms in front of me. The stranger's bemused expression reminds me that I almost toppled over and looked ridiculous during every painful second of my small trip. <laughs> I'm okay. I mumbled the words mostly to comfort and reassure myself, the only thing hurt right now is my pride. I give the stranger a meek th th thumbs up, though when the two of us lock eyes, my heart begins, my heartbeat begins to speed up. This man is slightly taller than me. His hair is wild and messy, as if he lets the warm breeze style it for him. And his mocha eyes seem anything but ordinary in the sunlight. None of these, none of, none of those really draw my attention more than his exposed chest. Underneath that gaudy blue Hawaiian shirt. He's ripped, I'll give him that. I'm sorry for bumping into you. I was texting and walking. Bad combination. The man holds up his gold cell phone and taps the air with it three times. I notice the black tribal ink that runs up his toned arm. Aside from the little dance I just saw, you look completely fine. <laughs> the man mimics the motions I had just done with my arms and chuckles. I feel my face heating up at the man's teasing. Fine is my middle name. Ooh, how do I respond to this guy? Fine is my middle name. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it's all good. 
Fine is my middle name. Fine is my middle name? Crap. I regret you. <laughs> I regret my choice of words almost instantly when I see the smirk on the man's face. He lowers his hand with the phone and brings it to his hip. Are you flirting with me? What? What? <laughs> no, I was just trying to make a dad joke. I swear I... My voice trails off when he, he juts out his lower lip in a small pout. Wow. So it didn't just make you fall for me? <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's not exactly grinning, there's something jovial, jovial about the man's presence. Perhaps it's the lax way he's dressed, or the way his posture is just slightly slumped over. There's nothing rigid about this man, apart from his muscles. I do have to admit that he's pretty good looking, but I haven't even started this job yet, and I don't know if I'll ever see him again. Plus, he's teasing me. There's no way he actually means anything serious by his flirty words. Right? To be fair, I didn't actually fall. I caught myself. I need to try harder. So what you're saying is that I need, I'll need to try harder? Next time, I bump into you. I'll make sure you hit the ground. <laughs> okay, that sounds like a threat. If my face isn't red already, it has to be by now. This man sends me a wink, which makes me lose all train of thought. This Hawaiian shirt wearing surfer boy has me at a loss for words. The two of us stare at each other for a moment when he starts to laugh. <laughs> Joking. And no need to get so flustered over little old me. Just then, as if a saving grace to get me out of this situation, the man's phone begins to ring to the tune of some 80s song. Can't quite put my finger on the name of the song, but it's definitely something my own father has jammed to in his office when the door is closed, and he thinks no one can hear him. But let those 80s tunes fly. 80s is the best. The man looks down at the now illuminated touchscreen and then lets out an aggravated sigh. When he returns his gaze to me, he's frowning only slightly. Sorry again. I've got to meet some friends, but maybe we'll bump into each other again. Uh, oh, uh, y yeah. See you around, I guess. Let's see what fate has in store for us. He places his right hand to his forehand and salutes me with two fingers. I watch him make his way towards the aquarium, typing furiously on his phone. I don't know if I will see the mystery, the mystery man again, but he's right. We'll see what fate has in store. I have other things to worry about, like filling up my tank with gas on the way home and calling my parents to let them know how my day went. I should leave Marisol Bay for the day and get everything at home prepared for work for my first day at work tomorrow. And that... That was a quick save. Ooh. That is a distraction. <laughs> the menu is really cool. But that is where we will leave Marisol Bay for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what we've seen so far. And... We will probably have the next one out, I think, tomorrow. We have a public holiday here in Australia for Labor Day. Celebration of the eight-hour workday. So I'll play some more tomorrow, upload it. I don't know how, well, what does it say? It's 45, 44,000 words long? Yeah, 45,000 words long. So... I'm hopeless at telling what words to time means, but 
we'll see how far we go and what options we'll have available to us in the next in the next episode I guess we'll call it so thank you for watching and tune in for the next installment when that comes up.